Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about these four types of spirals. And we're going to explain their basic properties. And I'm going to encourage you to think about how to look at them through a numeric modality. In other words, how to make sense of them by thinking of values of theta and r in polar graphs to help you get to a point where you would look at something like this beautiful work from Escher and make sense of it through the lens of these spirals. So Archimedean spirals, let's start by giving the formula. It's r equals k, some number k, times theta. Remember that theta is our input, is how much we're turning in a polar graph, and r is the distance from the pole. So here's our graph. We're starting at the pole, that's the origin, and as we turn, we get further and further away. Our r distance grows, that's directly proportional. You could also observe immediately that Oh, wow, look at that. Each spiral seems to be the same distance apart, and it is, and we'll get back to that. So it's a directly proportional spiral, whereas a hyperbolic spiral is not. It's uh, indirectly proportional, inversely proportional. So as theta increases, r decreases. In other words, the more I turn, the more theta is, the less distance I am from the pole. So this actually comes from out here, and as I turn more and more, I get closer and closer to the pole here. And we'll talk about some other basic properties. I'll just point that out right now. And one other thing, that the value of k will always be your horizontal asymptote. So you can see that this is kind of flattening out, and it will. It'll flatten out precisely at whatever k is. And there are ways to deal with these graphs. So, OK. Logarithmic spirals, which you kind of saw in that Escher uh, image in the previous slide. They're of the form r equals k to the power of theta, and the idea is that they're close together and they, sp they kind of spread out as you go along. There is a constant between these spirals. It's just not the same distance. It's some factor you're multiplying by. And finally, for Ma's spiral, k times the square root of theta. Notice that this starts off again at the pole, spirals around with big gaps, and then becomes less and less as we go. And I think of that as in connection to the square root function. In general, as we take square roots of numbers, that function in a rectangular graph, think about the square root of a y equals the square root of x. It kind of comes up quickly and then flattens out. That's what I think of here. Um, where we have these quick growth between spirals, but then that, even though it's still always growing, always getting bigger and bigger, just like the square root function, that growth, I I the rate of growth is decreasing. I guess. Um, what we should note out of these four, the only two that start at the origin or the pole are the Archimedean and Fermat spiral. Logarithmic spirals start at 1, 0, because if you plug in 0 for theta, your distance um, k to the 0 is 1, so that's where we're starting. And over here, we're essentially starting at infinity, because if theta is 0, you're dividing by 0, and it's undefined. All right, now that's really general stuff. I want you to have a way to think about these um, without just memorizing. but but a way to picture them, and the way I do that is numerically. So for example, uh, what I propose is, you know, you can play around with this on Desmos or something to get a sense of what's going on, but I really, for me at least, I need to try exact numerical values to make sense of it. So I propose that you play around with r equals 3 over pi times theta. I'm going to hide this other graph right here. Now the reason for this the reason for this is that it's when you set up a value of k that's over pi, or let's say 2 pi or something with pi, when you take different angle measurements in radians, or in radians, those pi units cancel out. So for example, um, if I want to make sense of this graph, I remember, OK, theta is my input, plug in 0. OK, 3 divided by pi times 0 is 0. So when theta is 0, I start off at the origin. If I plug in pi over 2, the pi's cancel. And I'm at one and a half right here. If I plug in pi, okay, three over pi times pi is three, and that's exactly what I'm at. And then just three over two um, times three, a uh, three over two pi times three over pi uh, is nine over two or four and a half, which is what we're at right here. And then we're at six at two pi because if you plug in two pi over here, right, the pi's cancel, and three times two is six. So notice we go zero. 3, 6, 9, 12. We're going up by 3s, um, and that's captured here in this k value. It's connected to it. Okay, So I would play around with something like that. Try, you know, try making it over 2 pi to see what happens. Try making it over uh, maybe 6 over pi to see what happens. And again, you'll see it crosses at 6. Make sense of that. Why is that? All right, next, uh, the hyperbolic spiral. 
guess we should make Halo a larger. Okay. So again, this one, right, if you go off, it is starting at an infinite distance away, an undefined distance, and then it kind of comes in and spirals, and it's only going to stop, right, wherever you tell it to stop. In this case, it's at 12 pi. If I did 24 pi, you would see it going ever more, right? So it's a really cool spiral. And as fun as that is, for me, to make sense of this, I want to mess around with it. I want to choose k values that allow me to cross one of these axes here as some integer. So for example, I propose you try just pi over theta. Uh, that will do all kinds of great things to help you understand the curve. If you plug in pi for k, right, think about what has to happen. When Okay, so if theta is 0, it's undefined. That comes from here. However, let's say I did theta equals pi. Sorry, wrong one, this one. <laughs> if theta is pi, we have pi over pi, it's 1. This is where we are. So notice our distance is 1 here. This represents when theta is pi. So this is when theta is pi over 2. And that makes sense, right? Pi over pi over 2 is just 2. Um, so this is our pi over 2 landmark. This is pi. And you can keep going, spiraling in to make sense of these points. So I encourage you to pick a k value that involves pi. Like try 2 pi and see what happens. Um, try 1.5 pi, mess around with it until you really make sense of it. Okay, next I would say on the logarithmic spiral, which you can use to approximate all types of things, including the Escher's, Escher, work I, Escher work I was showing earlier. Um, again, as cool as it is to mess around with this, like for example, I love the fact that if you have this, even a value of 2 for k, because you're dealing with powers, as you try to zoom out, okay, let me zoom out to capture more of the spiral, you can never really seem to get much of it, right? And eventually, oh, we lose track of it because it's not computing it anymore, right? So I love that because it reminds me, oh yeah, powers. This is a, a function that uses powers. 2 to the power of theta, that's growing really quickly. So uh, you, if you want to understand it, you want to use, let's say, numbers like between 1 and 2, Right? You can play with negative numbers, but just start with positive k values, and then you can get a sense of what's going on. But that's just general. To get a specific sense for me, I want to I make it so I can have it maybe intersect at certain friendly numbers. So what I would suggest is to pick a k value, let's say 5, but set it to a power that's 1 over 2 pi. Once you do that, hide this, um, and right now it's a circle because r is a constant. Um, we're going to raise that whole thing to the power of theta, right? So this is to the power of theta. Okay, now as unfriendly as this k value is, again, with exponents, we multiply theta by 1 over 2 pi. So whenever we're at theta is at, let's say, 2 pi, where are we going to be? Well, 2 pi times 1 over 2 pi, laws of exponents you multiply in this case, we're going to be at 5, and here it is. Here's 5, right? So this is at 2 pi radian. So we start here, again, when theta is 0, you're at 1. And then as you spiral around, you can find exact points, like this is at 2 pi. So you can infer this is at 1 pi. And if you plug in, let's say, if I zoom out here, you can see more. Like here, we're at, all right, 2 pi is at 5. So what's 4 pi at? So here's 3 pi. 4 pi is at 5 squared. And notice that's connected to this k value right here. Okay, so I'll leave that there for you. Again, play around with that. But finally, let's just look at Fermat's spiral right here. Again, if, if you want to understand this, you can play around in a general way by giving it random numbers to see what's going on, okay. Um, but also, pick a k value that will cancel out um, the pi's and the square roots. So for example, I propose, I think a friendly one I found was, let's say you have r equals, um, Let's make our k value 5 over the square root of pi. Not a friendly number. However, again, when we multiply it by theta, right? Oh, hide that. Let's say, oh, square root of theta. Keep doing that. Okay. When we multiply the square root of pi radians over the square root of pi, it's going to cancel, and we will be exactly at 5 right here. So we do start at 0, right? Z square root of 0 is 0. And then we spiral around, here we are at pi radians. Here we are at 2 pi radians. And by plugging in inputs and outputs, again, theta is your input, r is your output, you will find friendly numbers that help you make sense of this type of spiral. All right, I hope this helped.